Count Kai from uh, Everest Defense and Space. Is it on actually? Yeah, it's it's on. And uh, uh, we were just surprised if we would be the, in the right direction here, but we did, I didn't see any signs. We turn right, and there's the Sheikh Matun Hall. Good place, tiny All right. hall. Kai knows the place. You walk fast. Yes. I'm always <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're, we're in a hurry, are we? Absolutely. We need to get back. <laughs> All right, okay. Here. Okay, super. Gotta get the bag storage. If I'm not at red, or I'm not so I noticed a very nice vehicle um, with some very nice signage on the vehicle. The car is pretty much present here, right? Yeah. So, what does it do? So we have the first responder, this is only for female. It's like a first responder that only responds to female cases. It only responds to OB, gynecology cases yes. and also pediatrics. Okay, So All right. yeah, we got two cars, two vehicles, one in Bar Dubai area and the other one is in Dera side. Yes. And this is a new initiative. It was only established on June 28th. And until now, we ha we actually proceeded to more than 300 cases. How does the community adapt the car? Do they yeah. like it? So when you say we are in an Arab Muslim community, they really prefer seeing a female driver with a female paramedic. And a female so, color, is it? Exactly. And when they, whenever they see the pink, it's like, can we request this ambulance? And I'm like, are you sick? They were like, no, just in the future. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah, for sure. You can ask for the female first responder. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. how do you communicate through Tetra? Yeah. Right to the command and control center? Exactly. Uh, now, at the moment, this is a Tetra, but in the uh, coming future, it will be with LTE public. In the future, LTE. Yeah. Yes. So, what is the future? Is the future within within a we few have months now or a few years? It is, it is we, now we are working with the phase one, it is finished. And we are starting now phase two from October, you know, till end of this year. And phase three will be ready for export 22. So, so voice, we'll cover voice, all the voice, critical communications over LTE. Voice and data and video calls over. Right. So are you guys not waiting until the standard is being far finalized? Uh, standard, you know, that now, now with NIDA, uh, we are working very close with Airbus and we have like application over LT, private LTE network, you know, so okay. we are doing push to talk over LTE. So, and that works? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, this is basically just like the other responders, first responders. Even the help. seats? Yeah, pink. That's even pink, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you notice, we don't have a stretcher because the large vehicles, the large ambulance vehicles will take the stretcher. Okay. What we do is to blind the patient, wait for the vehicle, the vehicle would proceed with us and then just hand... First responder. Exactly. First responder, so you're on site and then the rest will yeah. be taken care yeah. of by Sometimes the ambulance. Sometimes we even, you know, we don't need an ambulance. If it's like a green priority, we'll just say, okay, it's a simple case, we can even have the patient with us and transfer him to the hospital. 10X. That is the vision of Sheikh Mohammed right here in Dubai. And that's his vision about the future of critical communications in this case. Very nice. So in countries like this, you definitely need a female first responder unit. I think this is a great initiative. I think the Sheikh has a very clear view on how the future should look like here in the UAE. Good stuff. Here is Daniel Foronda. <laughs> long time ago. Long oh, time ago. Well, yes. here in Las Vegas, no? Las Vegas. I think that's a long time ago. So how are you doing, sir? Good, good. How yes? are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to see Sapura here exhibiting yeah. at the show. So, yeah. as, as, as with its own brand, as a high yeah. company, right? Yes, correct. So yes. now, uh, well, as you know, High Terra uh, purchased uh, Sapura and Teltronic. Yes. So now Teltronic and Sapura are High Terra company. Yeah. So I think nothing changes. Now. Nothing changes. Well, by the moment we are, we are now begin with the integration and uh, good, good, good for, for be a bigger team. Yeah, good. that's good. That's good. Well, so, uh, integrating thanks. it's not integrating companies; it's integrating cultures as well. Because right. if I think about the most conflicting cultures in the world, I would say that is Chinese, that is English, that is German. I think that is a difficult job. Yeah, it will take a little bit of time, but I think it will be good for, for the three companies and also good for the market. It's now time to watch a movie. This is, of course, this is...
is finished. No, it has to be finished because they've got every, this is finished. every everything you can possibly need in critical communications is made in Finland. Special helmet PTTs for Finnish police on jet skis. Yes. There you go. You have a special helmet for the a different helmet well. for the snowmobile. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Interesting. Nice and warm, especially here in Dubai. Yes, this is the right location for the meeting with Nokia. I'm not sure if they're here. I hear people talking in the room, so let's take a look. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I would have a meeting here at 2.30. <laughs> that was definitely not the right meeting room. Well, it was the right meeting room. Nokia was there, so... But I should now have a meeting with Arnold Lacroix at the booth at NEDA. So going back to the exhibition center. Kind of confusing, but that often happens during events like this. Phil Kidder, wow, you're here in a different way, right? In a different position. I'm here as How a, is that? I'm here as a visitor, and um, uh, it's a bit surreal to be honest, because last year this was my event. This year it's somebody else's, and so it's a bit um, like an out-of-body experience. I can imagine, so, but, but there is also a lot of pressure away, I think, and, and that makes you looking at this event in a different way or not? Um, I don't know. I, uh, what I liked about the event was being involved in it and delivering what I thought people wanted, exhibitors and delegates, so now I have no say in, in uh, what's happening and so it's a whole different thing. I'm, I'm really, but, I'm here as a visitor. But thank you very much for all of these years that you contributed to the association because a big but, leap forward, is it? That was a, that's very kind of you. Uh, I tell you what, uh, what did uh, um, was when I left, I had uh, people from every continent of the world send me messages or ring me up or come and say hello and uh, it was touching so I appreciate that but you know my job was to support the community and that's what I tried to do. Thank you very much for all of those years. Okay. It was great working with you. Thank you very much yeah. and you. Yes. A little bit. How to communicate. All right now I'm ready to plug this into anything anywhere. Where should I plug this in? Um, I'm happy that I'm not working in the army because this is quite heavy. It's definitely robust and that is what it's all about. Robustness. You would say this is a very stiff antenna, but watch out. <laughs> so, if we talk about flexibility, this is an antenna which is really flexible. So, hangar. At Critical Communications Europe, I talked to Miko Salonen from Stop Noise, right over there. Um, I said actually, that time, that every time when I'm at the show, uh, that company has a new product, a new solution, which is kind of exciting. Every time when I speak to Miko and the other people from Stop Noise, they're having a new product. Um, let's check it out because I think they have a new product again. Miko. Hello. I said last time, every yeah. time I was at the show, mm -hmm. you have a new product, yeah, a new course. solution. <laughs> so this time, what's up? This time we'll have two, two new things. One is the bolting helmet that you also tried a moment ago. <laughs> that helmet, that was a great helmet yeah, actually. It's for <laughs> it's the jet ski and speedboat officers, police, rescue workers and all those. Yeah, but with a, with a PTT solution onto it, right? That, yeah, that, that yeah. is just what you Our thing is to make the communication to the helmet. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's helmet. Second thing. Second thing is that we have integrated a radioactivity detector to our Hybridex. Radioactivity. Yes. Can you explain that? Yeah, our idea is that the police, rescue workers and border guards, they can end up in situations where they don't know what they encounter if there may be radioactive material in some warehouse, some trucks going over border, or maybe even a fallout. We have also discussed uh, with a software company who is making a uh, Finnish company who is making the SEC app. Also a Finnish company? Yes, of yes. <laughs> and so with them we can offer a solution for the customer so that they can watch 
and read, check all the readings. If one detector gives an alarm, they can check if it's only a local or if it's a bigger uh, area with okay. this problem. Did you already detect any people here around that were radioactive or not? So far, fortunately so far, not. So far, not. So far good, so far good. Okay, yeah. Nico, thank you I will you let you know if I <laughs> Okay, find please anything. call me, all right? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. During this show, I was actually looking for some applications that are really top-notch. <laughs> I found one, and that company is InstaDevSec. I heard you have something very special regarding control centers. Yes, correct, correct. What is it? Well, uh, we are talking about uh, virtual control room concept, where we are splitting the uh, control rooms and functionality across the multiple separate control rooms in the pool. So, in other words, it means that if one control room gets overloaded, the other ones in the pool are automatically able to take care of the incident. So it's only with overload or is it also with when a control room, that specific control room has been hacked, for example? In example, if it's uh, one control room is down, the other ones can take care in the pool. So down because of whatever? Whatever reason, there can be whatever reason if it's done during the maintenance, during the any, any sabotage or, or whatever reason. So other ones are able to take care of the, this one particular control room task in the pool. Okay. So, so it's robust and uh, in, a, in addition it's of course operational cost point of view very cost optimized because you don't need to dimension one control room based on the peak load. You split, split the peak load across the other control rooms in the pool.